And we're gonna make this the first vegetable, first outdoor vegetable that I eat this season. Oh, wow. Guten gardening, everybody. It's the middle of April here in Zone 5, Wisconsin, and you can see some of our plants have started to come to life. And today I wanted to give you a little tour and show you what's already blooming, what's already growing here in our garden or starting to grow. So I'm going to take you through that. I've got a couple of things I have to take care of as well during this process, a little garden maintenance as we're getting ready here for these warmer months. I got to tell you, today is 73 degrees. It is stunning outside here is the perfect day to be out here i've already been out working in the garden for a couple of hours well let's go ahead and take a look and we're going to start with this beautiful plum tree now this is a two-in-one semi-dwarf plum tree that we got from fast growing trees a couple of years ago and actually i was going to do a video on it last season let's see if i can find some of that footage real quick i was going to do a video on these plums being so awesome like a small space garden plum look at all these flowers but i came back out the day to do it and they were all gone so i think some critters got in here but you can see this part of the tree is blooming a little bit earlier than the other variety which is just now starting to open up so that's the second variety right there but both of them are are packed and look at just the stunning beauty of this tree. Now we're also starting to see some life from our raspberry plants. We're starting to see the greens really develop on here. These are, so I'm surrounded by our heritage red raspberry. These are a fall bearing red raspberry, which means we get two crops. And these are the flora canes, the second year canes for our raspberries. I'm gonna show you some of our summer bearing raspberries because these, those all grow on the flora canes, just the flora canes. Um, but these are the second year canes. I'm going to cut these off and I'm gonna show you why sometimes I wait until this time of year before I do the trimming on these flora canes. All right, if we take a look at this flora cane as our example, you can see all of the dead parts here and actually let's get in a little closer you can see where the berries would have formed last season on the primocane when it was a first year cane so we get all these berries at the very end and then you can see the moment where the green growth starts farther down on the cane and this is where we're going to get our raspberries this season on this floor cane so the second year cane the floor cane because i waited this long and i waited until the green growth started this tells me exactly where i can come in and give it a little cut. So I'm gonna do that. Ooh, that one dropped right on top of this one, that's all right. I'm gonna do that for the rest of these floricanes. And again, this process is made super easy just because I waited until the new growth from the new season started up. I could have done this at the end of last season, and sometimes I do whenever we've already harvested the rest of the berries off of those canes. There you go. All right, <laughs> let's get this done. All right, that whole process of cutting these canes back took me three minutes and that's it that's super easy and then later on this season we'll start to see our prima canes our first year canes growing in between these canes so that's how this plant is going to take off for the next part of the growing season and one of the things i think is really cool about the different varieties of raspberries this is a red raspberry really sweet not really big seeds in it but one of the things I think is really cool about the different varieties of raspberries is the fact that this one grows in a, a cane-like structure where the canes typically get, and I see I missed one back there, but they typically get about five feet tall maybe, versus the other type, which is just a summer bearing black raspberry, where we trim the canes, we trim the prima canes at the end of the season, which causes them to create almost an umbrella effect of really, really long canes and i mean these things stretch out 10 12 15 feet you see what i'm talking about here now these are going to be developing one time and then we'll cut them back and then we'll have new development new prima canes coming in but we only get one harvest off of these but they are delicious and they're typically quite plentiful now if you're interested in learning more about raspberry care or the difference between the fall bearing and the summer bearing we have a couple of really in-depth videos for that type of care and i'll put a link to those in the description all right this is our black currant bush already look at all the greens and then look down in here you can see and get real close you see where the flowers are going to pop out where our fruits are going to be and right next door we've got our gooseberries i tell you what this as a berry 
is right up there with my favorites. Now, one of the things we know after having lived in Zone 5 Wisconsin now for going on 13, 14 years, the weather at this time of year can be pretty unpredictable. I mean, we're just a little over a week removed from a couple of inches of snow, and now we're in 70 plus degree weather. So when I see something like this, first of all, these are our honeyberry plants. They are wonderful tasting. They, the fruit is uh, like an oblong blueberry, a little bit of a different taste than a blueberry though. But these are typically the first performing fruits of our season. We see these come out first and you can see all of the blooms on here. I can see a bee, hold on. Now you probably can't hear it. I'll try to be as quiet as possible for a second. You hear the bees in there? You probably can't, but there are bees in there pollinating already. So this is a great plant early on because we get these blossoms, these blooms. Oh, there's a nice little up close shot of a bee. Isn't that beautiful? Getting in there. So these are getting pollinated already, attracting lots of bees. And again, this is a first fruit for us or one of our first fruits. And the reason I bring up the changing of the weather is well, all these blossoms are out and if we see a freeze, we could lose them. So one thing that I have to do with plants like this, with our honeyberry plants like this, is I have to cover them up if I see a freeze coming, which isn't too hard to do. But we've actually struggled more in the last couple of seasons. You can see all of our bushes here. We've struggled more with the birds coming in and picking these berries. So we've had to come up with a, a method to protect them. And last season that involved a nice little covering Trying to get some up close to these bees. I absolutely love this. Uh, we had to come up with a, <laughs> a covering, a netting to keep the birds out. Otherwise we weren't gonna get any of these. And you know, all this is happening with a month still to go before our average last frost date. So that's something else to keep in mind. We just gotta keep our eye on the weather when it comes to this type of fruit. And you know, all of our first performing or first blooming fruits like our apples. This is our three-in-one apple tree at the front of our property. And again, it's just like the two-in-one plum tree. We see one variety. You can see the color that these flowers are going to be here. You see one variety that's getting close to opening up. You see another variety here that is just starting to emerge. And you see a third variety here that's still in its dormant state. And so all of this here in the next short time, it's gonna be well opened up. Now, another fruit tree that I'm super excited about is our Hosui Asian pear. We did a YouTube short last season where we tasted one of those pears. I wanna tell you something, this one is delicious. And this is the best this tree has looked since we planted it. Now we're about four years in with this tree, so we should start to see some pretty good production Oh, but I can't wait for this one. If you've never had an Asian pear, you've got to try it out. And for those of you that have tried Asian pears, what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Well, I was almost going to not show you this little bed here. This is where we grew our potatoes, our fingerling potatoes last season. And right next door, I guess some of our chamomile blew in. I don't think this stuff, I don't know how you kill it. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, if, if you want to or not, it spread so much. There was, there's been snow on this. There's been heavy freezes on this. And it's like, it's like nothing ever happened. So I suppose if you like chamomile tea a lot, then this is not a bad problem to have. I thought about selling some of these in the past, selling some chamomile plants. Um, you know, again, if you like it, you make your own. The flowers are beautiful. It's good pollinator attractor, but man, we can't get rid of it. Well, you know I can't do a first signs of spring in the garden kind of thing without coming over here. It's kind of a mess in here right now. I haven't come through and weeded, but you see what I see. We've got our asparagus coming through. I can see three or four right in there. Three or four nice little stalks. This is year number five with our asparagus. So, oh, an absolute, an absolute favorite. This tells you something about grow zones too, because I just saw somebody post a picture of this on Facebook where they had their first couple of pieces of asparagus from the from, from this season. And I would say they're probably a week ahead of us in terms of average warmth, which makes perfect sense for where they are. So 
give me a couple more days and we'll be harvesting some asparagus. An absolute personal favorite. I'm gonna show you two more things that we overwintered out here. Um, one, I don't wanna call it accident, we'll call it accidental. Yeah, we did an accidental overwintering, so we'll see how that goes. And the other one, well, we're here to get the seeds from a plant that produces in its second year. And you can see the color of it right here. We have two different types of our Brussels sprouts. You can see what's left over here. You can actually see the sprouts, I think, kind of, oh, no, not kind of, they are opened up. You see right there? Sprouts are opened up. But like most brassicas, these Brussels sprouts, and we have a green and we have a couple of red ones here, but they go to seed in their second year. And so this will be the year that we collect them and collect the seeds from them to plant in the future seasons. And actually, I forgot about this one. This is some celery that we didn't plant this season. This is what survived, it looks like, from last season. Some cutting celery. You know what? I'm gonna take a little piece off of here. And we're gonna make this the first vegetable, first outdoor vegetable that I eat this season. Oh, wow. That is the strongest celery taste I've ever had in my life. <laughs> well, there you go. That's, that's free food right there coming back from last season. All right, here is the other vegetable that I was going to show you. This is what I intended to show you. These are not onions. These are leeks from last season. And the soil got cold and froze and I didn't dig them out, so I thought they were pretty much goner. And then I looked it up, and it looks like this is actually not too uncommon for people to overwinter leeks. I had no idea. But what I've heard is that the taste gets a lot stronger if you overwinter them. So I haven't harvested any of these yet. I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably do a YouTube short on harvesting one of these and, and tasting it just to see how well it does, just to see what it tastes like. But I got a couple in here. If you've had any experience overwintering leeks, let us know what your experience was, what your thoughts are. Again, an accident, but let's see what they taste like. And if they're still good, maybe that's something for the future. Okay, fine. I've got one more thing that I'm going to show you. It's right in this bed behind us, and this is our garlic. It's looking fantastic. Fantastic. We got a couple of different beds of garlic. We got some green garlic growing in one of our long raised beds. The green garlic is a spring garlic, we'll call it. Um, and then we've got garlic that we harvested last season. We went through the same process that Keen Garlic recommends for, for their garlic, because originally the garlic that we grew last season was from Keen Garlic. So we took some that we saved over the course of the summer. We took it, prepared it, planted it, and I don't see any spots, knock on wood, but I don't see any spots where the garlic isn't coming up. I'd say we're at about five or six inches now. It did really nicely this winter. I've even got some growing in a really small pot. I wanted to see what I could do with that. So lots of garlic coming our way in a couple of months and the scapes, boy, just having them last season. Last season I made some garlic scape pesto phenomenal we've still got some garlic that we're eating off of last season's garlic so i'm really excited to see how well this does this season considering now this is our garlic from the original keen garlic one of the nice things about overwintering plants or growing these perennials plants that like the fruit trees etc the fruit bushes that take multiple years is that they typically start you know as the weather changes you get to see that early production in the garden it's like the asparagus. I mean, it takes a couple of years to really get to the point, but then it becomes the first thing or one of the first things you see in the spring. And that's where we're at right now. It's not yet spring. And yet this is where we're starting to see some of that growth. It's getting exciting, I would say. And I'm really excited to get out here and do more. Of course, we have a whole bunch of seeds that we still have to start. We've got a bunch of stuff indoors, uh, lots of seeds that we've already started. And hopefully those all turn out well. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little garden tour here in Zone 5, Wisconsin. A little, little garden maintenance as well. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like. Leave us a comment. Remember to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.